Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing this evening? Hallelujah. Anybody excited to be here? Yes, sir. Papa Joe, how you doing? I just saw you in the hospital a few hours ago. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Eh, you never know. He's like Santa Claus. He'll just show up anywhere. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. Also, I want to announce that uh, Chuck Cunningham, uh, he works in our media department, volunteers in our media department, runs a camera often up here on the platform. His mother passed away this week, Joanne Cunningham. Her viewing will be Friday uh, from the hours of 6 to 8, and the funeral will be 2 o'clock on Saturday at Good Shepherd in South Charleston. Uh, if you could uh, please uh, maybe try to press out and, and just um, make it for the viewing or the funeral, I know that they would appreciate it, and please be praying for them that God would just move in a, an amazing way through all of that. Amen? Amen. Well, I was going to announce that uh, Joe Cavender is in the hospital but uh, he's not. He's here. Uh, I, uh, I, I got back in town um, one day this week. Um, I'm not trying to be funny. I think it was Monday. I, I think I was back in town. I, I was down in uh, Texas. Uh, remember, anybody remember RJ that was an intern for me last year? The only intern that I've ever had personally. Uh, he got married. Uh, in fact, he married Pastor Dan Armstrong's, one of his daughters. And they asked me to come down and do the wedding. And, and I went down and, and uh, uh, performed the wedding, part of the wedding ceremony. Had a great time. Got back. Uh, I think it was Monday. Went and picked my wife up. Couldn't wait to see her. Um, and I completely forget where I was going uh, on all of this. found out that Joe, I'm going to skip, I don't know if this is where I was going or not, found out that Joe, you just wait, you'll get there one day, you'll, you, you'll get there. Some of you are already there, and, and, and if you can bear witness, just raise your hand, say I'm with you, Pastor. I, hey, wow, I appreciate your kindness. And um, um, found out all oh, that he was in the hospital while we were down in Texas and prayed for him and uh, heard that he pretty much went uh, under, uh, against his will. I uh, didn't want to go to the hospital. It's for sick people and yada, yada. And his daughter said, you're gone. And anybody knows Heather, you just say, yes, man, get in the car and go. And um, anyway, they went to the hospital and I went to, I saw one, was it Periscope? Is that the, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. They, my wife was showing me uh, about Papa Joe. They were videoing him last night. And he so, said something about one of Pastor Darren's Reese Cups. Two of them made, him, made it to his room today. And that's probably why you got out of the hospital. It was uh, the recent thing. Uh, the only, only man I know that gets admitted to the hospital, three souls get saved, one person gets healed, and one delivered. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But that's something. No, no joke. Two, two of the ladies that came in to clean the room, they accepted the Lord as their Savior. Uh, then there was, they, they was one lady, a Jewish lady came in. She got saved and set free and healed. She couldn't smell. She, she, had, she, had lost, she had lost her sense of smell. Correct me if I'm wrong. She had lost her sense of smell years ago and was, was not able to smell anything. And, and Joe said, my, my Lord can, can fix that. And, and they uh, prayed over her and... Uh, Heather got her anointing oil out, frankincense and myrrh, and began to anoint her. She said, I can smell, I can smell, and hadn't smelled in years. And that's my God. He's, he's God. Well, I wish somebody was here to get excited. Praise the Lord. Oh, there's another one saved today? <laughs> one more saved. Four. How many days are you in the hospital? Four. I'm with you. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. Everybody there? 24 through 30. 24 through 30. Praise the Lord. Let me read that to you. I really don't know where we're going tonight, but we're just going to go. Verse 24. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, 
The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us to go out and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the end of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. This passage of scripture is a parable. A parable is a short allegorical story designed to illustrate or teach a truth. That's what a parable is. And it says that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. And there's many parables throughout the Word of God in the in, in, in the first in, in the four gospels that talks about talks about parables about this is like the kingdom of heaven. And you see, we think that the kingdom of heaven is without issues. We we think the kingdom of heaven is without any resistance or difficulty. We we, we think the kingdom of heaven is just perfect and you can just skip through like a little girl in in, in a dress full of dandelions and there's no snakes out there. But it says this parable, it says this is like the kingdom of heaven, that a man sows good seed in his field, but while he slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. You see, I want to talk to you about the wheat and the tares or the wheat and the weeds tonight. A farmer plants wheat in his field. It's good seed. But while he slept, an enemy came in in the same garden, tell your neighbor it's the same garden, And planted tares among the wheat. Or planted bad seed among the wheat. Tares are weeds known as bearded darnel. In the early church, listen, in the early stages of this bearded darnel and and wheat, you cannot tell them apart. It's only when the two, the wheat and the bearded darnel, as they begin to mature, that you can tell them apart. And the way you tell the difference between what is pure and right and what is true, genuine wheat and what is actually a weed or a bearded darnel is that the wheat, the wheat, its fruit grows in its head and becomes very heavy. And when it begins to, to reach maturity, it, it, it's so heavy it begins to bow down or in, in, in reference as surrendering to its creator. But bearded darnel, the weeds, it doesn't have that heaviness. It doesn't sense that weightiness. And, it, and it's just full of little black, almost weightless seeds that there's no bowing down. There's, there's, there's no surrendering, but it just stands up tall and proud. It's a sign of rebellion. Mm. Your words and actions either support or undermine the one you're serving. Rebellion. This wasn't my message, but uh, hey, let's hit it. What do you say? Rebellion. When you... Try to skirt around instruction. When you try to add what you want to do, when you have firm instruction, it's rebellion. When your boss gives you instruction and you don't want to do it and you do what you want to do, it's rebellion. See, 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 there's a dress code. There's a dress code to be up here. And, and, if, and if you don't want to if you don't want to uh, 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 adhere to that dress code, then you're not going to play or sing. Well, I'm not going to go anywhere where there's a dress code. It's rebellion. Yeah. Come on, Come on, man, God. Oh, 
Well, I don't know why I got to wear this just because of that. Because it's a dress code. Because that's what God has placed upon me. That's what God has placed upon the man of God before me. It's funny when you go out of town what you see. It's funny. It's funny that when you go out of town what people wear when they know there's a dress code. Maybe not here, but in the office. Hey, I, I, if, if I could get away with it, I'd wear short pants and flip-flops, but that isn't a dress code. That's not what God placed on me. Well, Pastor, I think you're being a little harsh. I think some's being a little rebellious. I don't know. It wasn't a message, but it feels good, and I can feel some squirming, so I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep going till the squirming stops. When we've been given the instructions, this is what I want you to do. I want you to pray, and the pray turns into a preach. Eh? Oh, I just lost y'all. I, I, remember, I remember one time I, when, when I was the associate pastor here, I, I remember there was prayer time over in the, in the uh, 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 office building, and there was prayer time at 9 a.m. downstairs with Pastor Wright. And I remember one day, I don't know what I was thinking, I remember one day I went across the street early because I had to go get my mail. I didn't get it the day before. And I just walked over to get my mail, and I, I wasn't thinking anything about it, but I walked over to get my mail, and I missed 9 a.m. prayer over on this side of the street. They asked me to just, hey, would you just, Pastor, would you just stay over here and pray with us? Sure, I'd love to pray with you all over here. And I just prayed over there, and I come over, and I walked through the door, and I saw Pastor. I said, good morning, Pastor. And I knew that look. I know when he had that kind of quirky little smile on his face. Oh, something's up. And I just walked on about my way trying to get down the steps before he called my name. I knew what was going Hey, Darren. Mm, yes, sir. Can you come in here? Yes, sir. I walked in there. He said, we have prayer over here at 9 a.m. every morning. I said, yes, sir, I understand that. I just went over to, to get my mail, and they asked me to pray over there, so I stayed over there. He said, we have prayer over here every morning, 9 a.m. Yes, sir, will not happen again, and it did not happen again. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Is this, is this my flesh or is this a spirit leading me? Because it's feeling kind of good, you know. I don't know. When we begin to override the instructions that we've been given, it's rebellion. It doesn't matter whether we like it or not. Many times God just wants to see. Will you adhere? Mm, oh, I know this is Holy Ghost. Because you see, many are believing God for more. But you see, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And, and you see, as long as you're just feeding with the little foxes, you'll never get the more you're believing and asking for because you're not, you're not willing to surrender, submit. Mm. See, now you think Nicole was nice to you Sunday after this. How many of you know she preached, a, she preached a phenomenal message Sunday morning? Praise God. Mm. Man, I don't even know where I'm at now. Unwillingness to bow. Proud. Rebellion. This parable is, 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 a, is, is a message between the authentic and the fake. It's a, it's a message between truth and deception. It's a message between godly and ungodly. In verses 24 and 25, it says, a man who sowed good seed in his field. You see, everything starts out as a seed. Everything starts as a seed. Words, thoughts, looks. They're all seeds. Yeah, I only got two people amen in me. Everything starts out as a seed. That action that you followed through with started out as a seed, as a thought. The devil didn't make you do it. You didn't surrender to the will of God. You didn't tell the devil no. You said yes to the enemy. Oh. 
Everything starts as a seed. And you see, seeds produce. They either produce life or destruction. And many times it's hard to tell the difference between the two because they look alike and they sound alike until they begin to manifest and mature. My God. Watch, see, watch what seeds produce. If it produces division or, or it disrupts or it undermines or, or it, it begins to remove life, it's not of God. While he was planting good seed, the enemy came in and planted weeds. And it happened in the same field. Why? Because someone fell asleep. That's why we must always be on watch. We must always be on guard. Yes, sir. Because if we're not, a time of compromise will creep in. Yes. When we don't have time to let our guard down. We don't have time to ease up. There isn't time to ease up in the kingdom of God. We must continue to press into the will of God, the heart of the Father, to know what He's saying to us today. How, how can we know the will of God unless we're pressing into it? How can we know what's on Papa's heart unless we press into His heart? Just because you see men and women of God say something doesn't mean it's authentic. You must press into the heart of God to understand whether it's authentic or not. Don't you ever take what I say to be gospel. Don't you ever take what I say to be 100% truth. You take it home and you line it up with the word of God. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, it was me, not God. But we can get so familiar with vessels that we just begin to say, well, the, hey, th this is 100% accurate. You better line it up with the word of God first. I don't care who it is. I don't care how long you've known them. Right. Right. Hmm. Seeds produce either life or destruction. But notice that it was at night under the cover of darkness that the enemy came in. He sows secretly. Mm, is it going to hurt? <laughs> he so secretly as not to be seen. He doesn't want to be identified. <sighs> and anything that cannot withstand light is not God. Anything that is unwilling to be brought into light is not from God. If you have to do it under the cover of darkness, it's not of God. If you have to do it secretly, it's not of God. If you have to do it when no one knows about it, it is not of God. Oh, this is, this is hard. Man, I didn't know. I did, he, he pulled a sneaky on me right here. He didn't show me all this before. The Word of God, Word, word of God, and, and, and I wouldn't plan on hitting this, but let's do it anyhow. Amen. Amen. And in Matthew 18, 7 and 9, it, it, it talks about that if, you're, if your hand or your foot offends, you cut it off. If your eye offends, you pluck it out. That's harsh. But that's what the Word of God says, that if your hand offends, you cut it off. If your foot offends, you, if your eye offends, you pluck it out. <laughs> if you have problem with online pornography and you still have a computer, you really don't want to be set free. If you're married and there's someone on your job flirting with you and you're having difficulty resisting it, you better quit your job. <laughs> you all can't handle this tonight. You have a trouble shoplifting, you better stay out of a store. You better call someone else and say, hey, can you go to Kroger for me? Because I can't leave the peas alone. Hey, can you run down to Walmart for me? Because I'm having difficulty. I'm having difficulty not slipping something under my coat. I'm serious. I'm not playing games with you. How bad do we want freedom? How bad do we want to walk in the light as he is in the light? If you can't do it in the light, it's not of God. If you have to do it in dark, it's of the enemy. Somebody give God some praise in the house. Somebody stand to your feet and give God praise. Come on, stand to your feet and give God praise. He's worthy of it. He's calling us to holiness. 
He's not coming back for a lukewarm church. He's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's not coming back for a harlot. He's not coming back for a church that surrenders to every voice of man, but only surrenders to the voice of the Most High. Mm. Oh, my God. Somebody need to get off Facebook. You're using that as a secret connection. Facebook gossip, argue, message an old flame. You need to get rid of your phone. I hit on that last week. Some of you thought I was nuts. I'm not nuts. I'm gonna stay on it till I see. It. I'm gonna stay on it till I see it. Just lying cell phones. That's harsh. No, it isn't harsh. How bad do you want to be set free? How bad do you want to get in close to daddy? I don't know about you, but he's everything to me. He's everything to me. He's all that I have. In that midnight hour when no one else is there, he's the one that catches my tears in a bottle and he labels every one of them. Some of you have teenagers and you're crying yourself to sleep over. Not one tear has ever fallen without my God collecting it and recording each one. of them. It's in the word of God. Check it out. Tear number 1,586. Crying over her son that is hooked on heroin. Tear number 2,598. Tears of rejoice because she just led her son to the Lord. Let, let, me, let me hit this. I, I've, I've got five minutes and I've got to close. Take your Kids got to get to bed for school tomorrow. <laughs> try, try, trying, to get, trying to get people to, to, to come back. To, to, to Wednesday night because a lot go out on, on the summer and they go out and play and then they don't want to come back on Wednesday because well I gotta get the bed I gotta get the kids to bed it's too early but yet you can so, so, so I'm trying to give you both barrels in 10 minutes so people come back to church and I'm talking to you out there come on back notice uh, I don't know what's got on me. But I like it. Notice. Don't be writing Pastor Dan any notes. He didn't put anything on me when I was out there. It was just the heat that got to me. Notice, notice that the enemy sows in the same field. Hmm. Just really don't know how to close this thing. <laughs> Notice he sows in the same field. And it says that this parable is like the kingdom of God, which gives the indication that the field could be the church. Which means that everyone that's planted may not be planted of the Lord. Why not? Sometimes people come in, plant themselves just to stir. Sometimes people come in, plant themselves just to try to take away from this body to add to another body. Did he just say that? Yes, I've seen it. That's, that's not of God. I make no apologies for it. That's not of God.
Did you see that woman up there in the choir? Did you see how short her dress was? I don't think this church is of God. I think we just better go on. And, and, and you and say, well, you know, I don't much believe that. But then the longer they continue to talk, the more you give them, their, their, give them your ear. And before you know it, you're going to walk out the door with them and you could miss. <clears throat> you could miss what God has for you. Have we ever thought, my, this is not what I plan to preach tonight. This is not it. But have you ever thought that how many times that we may, we, just look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. And the other neighbor say, no, he's talking about you. <laughs> have you ever stopped to think about how many times we in church have been a distraction ourselves? And I pray to God that if I've ever been a distraction and someone missed their call of salvation, I pray to God that he'd call their name one more time. Get me out of the way, God. Huh? But, but have you ever thought when pastor goes a little bit long and you guys go ahead and get up and get ready because I'm running out of time, but have you ever thought that when pastor goes a little bit long on Wednesday night and, and you begin to think about, oh, I got to get home, I, I got to get my kids in the bathtub, I, I got to get lunches packed, I got to do this, I got to do that, and as soon as he all says, stand to your feet, you grab your coat, you grab your keys, and you don't just have one key, but you have a great big band of keys, just like the pictures of your grandkids, you pull them out there, and it sounds like jingle bells, jingle bells. And, and it distracts, it distracts someone in front of you or behind you. And they were this close. God had opened the door of their heart. Their heart was softened. They were in the right place. And they were just getting ready to commit. And all at once, jingle bell, jingle bell. And they missed the call of God. Because we, because we were a distraction. Surface almost getting ready to close. I wish you'd hurry up, man. I'm, I got to get out of here. I got somebody waiting on me down at the, uh, the Whites for a blueberry muffin. <laughs> and all at once, someone behind you, they were so close. <clears throat> the cold breaks out into a prophetic song as the altar call is given. I can't stand this song. And someone was so close. Oh, no, no one ever do that. Yeah, they do. Honestly, honestly, many times without thinking about it. They don't intend to. They don't know what's at stake. They've already accepted the Lord. But what about the ones around you that have not? How, how, how valuable is that one beside of you? Do they deserve... What about, those, what about those people at the hospital that maybe they've been offended at church. And God had to send a man of God to a hospital. Kicking and screaming the whole way. Where'd you accept Jesus? Uh, it was a general hospital room, 415, yeah. right over there against the wall in that chair. Yeah. Who led you to the Lord? I don't know, some grandpa-looking guy named Papa Joe. I don't know what his real name is. I'm not trying to be funny. But you think about what I'm saying to you tonight. Think about how many times we may have been a distraction. God forbid, maybe someone missed it because of me. In the same field, this had to frustrate the farmer, knowing that he had weeds growing in his garden and knowing that he couldn't do anything about it. I'll be honest with you, over 20-some years of pastoring, I felt that frustration. I felt that frustration hearing voices. Once you do something about it, once you make a phone call, once you take care of that situation, once you put a stop to it, 
why don't you see the value in the wheat? Do you know why they couldn't go and tear up the tares? Because when the tares, when they reach maturity, their roots have already wrapped around the roots of the wheat. And if you tear up the tare, you tear up the wheat. And God says the wheat's too valuable. Let them grow together. I'll take care of it all later. Oh, if it was sin, it's a no-brainer. You just take care of it. But sometimes it isn't always sin. Sometimes it's poor judgment. Sometimes it just isn't used in wisdom. Sometimes it's a seed. There's been many times people have asked, won't you just do something about it? Because it's not my battle. It's the Lord's battle. I'm to walk it out in unity. By God's grace, I don't come against other men and women of God. By God's grace, I don't cause division. Not that I can't. I'm carnal just like everyone else. But I do my best to walk to straighten their path. I do my best to follow the heart of God. Yes, Am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. Ask my, ask my wife or my kids or anyone around me. They'll tell you that I'm not. But they grow together. And the key to all of it is this. Is that God will judge. I'm nobody's judge. Well, what do I do in the meantime? This is what I tell you. There's many voices speaking. You must pray and discern what spirit is behind that voice. I'm not trying to over-spiritualize anything, but you must pray and discern what spirit is behind the voice. Judge, no. Inspect fruit, yes. Stand your feet. Stand your feet a minute. I'll give you your fruit inspector license as you leave the building. We're no one's judge. We're no one's judge. But you're allowed to look at someone's fruit. How, how many of you have ever smelled a rotten potato? Isn't that nasty? I mean, whoo! It's, it's, it's horrid. If, if, if someone's fruit has maggots and flies crawling all over, you may want to stay away. But all, if you've looked at that fruit and it's good and it's pure, Mm. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Did you notice that when Shelby was singing, as Shelby was singing, that there, there was just a, a, a purity that just flowed throughout this, this sanctuary. Anyone sense that? I mean, it, it was, it was as, as she was opening her mouth, it's just like, wow, what is this? And it was just purity. And, and man of God said, pure heart. So I'm like, pure heart, pure heart. Yeah. I sense a pure heart. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. What he was doing is he was inspecting the fruit. And as the fruit began to roll, he was expecting, purity, purity. Judging, no. But finding it pure. Perfect, no. But pure. Well, what do I do? In 1 John 4, 1, it says, test the spirits. How do I know? Test the spirits. Test the spirit of the voice speaking. Test the confession of the voice. And thirdly, test your spirit. I'm going, I'm going to drop some bad news on you and then I'm going to give the altar call. It isn't always the other person. Sometimes, sometimes it's us. Can I give you one other little thing? Thank you. Everyone around you is not always wrong. 
And it is not always someone else's fault. When everyone else is always wrong and when it's always someone else's fault, you better take a look within. First Samuel 16, 7, God said, I don't look at the outward appearance. He said, I look at the heart. You want to know who's sowing? Whose voice is speaking? Look for the Father's heart. And if you can't see the Father's heart, it's not the Father. And if it isn't the Father, it's either the enemy or it's our flesh. So tonight, if it seems like there's some weeds growing in your field, won't you come and allow the Lord to get rid of those weeds and bring purity back into our life? I challenge you to come tonight. There's been anything in this message that's touched your heart. I'm going to ask you to come right now. Anything. Maybe the Lord began to speak to you in a way that I didn't even bring out. He's God. He can do that. If you're having difficulty with leaving some things alone and God's telling you to put it down, come tonight. Ask Him for deliverance. Maybe, I don't know, maybe someone would just pray and and ask the Lord to to just pull you in a little bit closer to Him. If you want to just a little closer walk with the Lord, why don't you just come and say, God, I want to be close to you. Tear up my garden, God, if it needs torn up. Is there anyone in the house that would be bold enough to say, God, I need some work. Start with me, God. Start with me. Stop looking around and start looking within. And just say, God, start with me. He's looking for pure vessels. If you're here tonight and your soul needs saved, come to him. Come to him right now. Woo! There's some in the house. You... You, you thought you've dodged it for a couple weeks, but God's still calling your name. And I want you to understand, He's not going to stop. He loves you too much to quit. So you need to come to Him right now. Ma'am, you need to come to Him. He's calling your name. He loves you with an unconditional love. You don't have to perform for Him to accept you. You just need to come to Him. Sir, He's calling your name. It doesn't matter what's in your past. He'll wipe it away. He'll make it brand new if you, if you, just, if you just come to him. So tonight, whatever the need, whatever the desire, whatever the hurt, whatever the emptiness, whatever the issue, the problem, you come as Nicole sings. You come. Come now. Space up around this altar that's still available. Would would you please just come? If nothing else, just come to thank Him. If nothing else, just come and pour your love out on Him, your worship out on Him. But there's still space available. There's still room. Maybe you can thank Him for healing your loved one. 
for opening the door that was closed and you thought it was impossible to open. But God somehow, some way, somehow God intervened. Somehow God opened that door. Man said it would never happen, but with God all things are possible. There's still souls that need to be saved tonight. Come. You come. about that. into the light. No more sleeping. I want to run to the light. No more sleeping. Shine your light upon all things. Yes, Lord. question how many of you are having difficulty in this life right now whether it's financial marital job kids relationships raise your hand keep them up there for a minute just having struggles issues really and some days you just, you think, God, how much longer? Well, 
You know, one day it'll all be over. And one day those struggles will be no more. One day you'll live with, with the Lord for all eternity if you know him as your Savior. And think about you'll get to walk on streets of gold for all eternity and you'll get to just worship the King of Kings forever. Never again a tear of sorrow. Never again a pain in your body. Oh, think about that. Never again a pain in your body. Never another gray hair. Never another wrinkle. Never again extra skin growing on your arm. Never again babies dying. No more cancer. No more lung disease or heart disease. No more ailments. No more financial difficulty. I mean, the streets are gold. <laughs> Shoo. And many times we think, God, what's taking so long? Look around you. There's still some of his kids that need retrieved. There's still some of his kids that need saved. Oh, I want to go to heaven too. I do. I want to sit down with Elisha. So what was it like washing the hands of Elijah? What was it like the day that God took your man of God and you stood by the bank of the Jordan ball by yourself with that mantle and you rolled it up and you smote the water and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? What were you, what were you feeling? What were you thinking? I want to ask the woman with the issue of blood, what was it like when you touched the hem of his garment and put such a demand on him that virtue, anointing drained out of his body? What, what hit your body? What did that feel like? Oh, I want to go to heaven too. There's people there I want to see. I want to see Brother Castor forget. I want to see baby Ethan. I have a copy of his footprints, but oh, I want to see him. Oh, I want to go too. But the wheat's too valuable. wheat's too valuable. That's why we're still here for now. The wheat's too valuable. It isn't time yet. Someday, but not yet. Not yet. Nicole, dismiss us in prayer if you would, please. Father, I'm so thankful for your presence. I'm so thankful for your love for us, God, that, oh, we hear you calling. Oh, let us let us hear those who have an ear. Let us hear, God. Let us hear. Open our ears to hear. Oh, what you're saying to us, God. I pray that it would burn in our hearts, Father. Oh, I thank you that you, you're calling forth an awakening, God. I hear it. Oh, God, I'm so thankful. And Lord, as we are here, as long as we are here, we are going to stand for you. God, we are going to do all that you've called us to do by your grace and by your strength. For we are yours, God. We are your body and we yes, are going to arise. Yes, Lord. And we are going to shine in these last yes, days, God. Yes, and so thankful, Father, all oh, for your love, God. Yes. And right now, Father, I just thank you for each and every person. Lord, in this place tonight, bless them. Yes, Lord. Lord, bless them. I pray that you would let your face shine on them like never before, God. Yes, I pray, Lord, as they leave this place, God, that you would, Lord, just protect them, take care of their families, Lord. I pray that there would be peace in their cars and peace in their homes. And, and Father God, yes, that they will rest well tonight, Father, yes, good sleep. And, Lord, that tomorrow, a great day in the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Before you leave. One, don't forget to pick up your kids immediately following the service. Two, invite some of the ones around you.
to church Sunday morning. If they already go to another church, leave them alone. If they're a little bit disgruntled in their church, leave them alone. Go after the lost. Go after the ones that, go after the wild fish. You hear me? Invite someone Sunday. By God's grace, I'll see you Sunday morning. Thank you for coming tonight. Come on, somebody give God praise as you leave tonight.